Hello, everyone. Welcome to IGEL Weekly Podcast. Uh, this is episode 67. I am your uh, guest host today, Patrick Toner, joined by two regulars and good friends from IGEL, Sebastian Parasat and Chris Feeney. Uh, guys, how you doing? Chris, you first. Well, Chris, uh, you're in a nice fall for the people watching. You're in a beautiful park right now, with the nice fall foliage. <laughs> uh, Got to set the mood, doing? right? Uh, good. Uh, nice fall day here. It's election day in America. Uh, so get out and vote if you uh, haven't already. Make sure you get that thing it's going midterms, on. midterms, right? Um, midterms, yes. Look at you, Seb. No one uh, how wow. politics go on in, in America here. But uh, yes, uh, so we are electing the entire United States House representatives. Or, uh, some are getting reelected, some are not. Uh, and then the Senate's about a third of the Senate roughly. And then of course, local and state uh, offices, but it's a beautiful day here in North Carolina. Uh, fall colors are out, leaves are falling and uh, blowing leaves, enjoying the, enjoying this change of season. So, you know, I've realized Chris, uh, being in Florida now, we do not have that. Uh, even in Northeast Florida, where I'm, where I'm located, we have a lot of like pine trees or the oak trees, uh, nothing changes here. Um, and it wasn't until I went up to Charlotte uh, a few weeks back that I saw, you know, the nice fall leaves and everything. Uh, it's kind of nice, but um, yeah, I'm also not I, really missing the temperature I would be in right now if I was still up in New Jersey. So, yeah, I would say I was in at the beginning of October, right after the hurricane blew through, I was down in Miami. It was beautiful. No humidity. It was very nice. Uh, about a month later, I came back down to South Florida and the humidity was back, and I was like, "This is miserable." <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, oh, man. It's, uh, it's one thing to have heat; humidity is a whole other animal. It really does yeah. make it worse. All right. Well, hey, Seb, how you doing, man? How's uh, how's everything going in Europe? Everything good? Oh, well, in Europe, we're doing almost almost good. We have also fall right now, so I just do did some math with my uh, converter. So we have fourteen degrees Celsius, which are uh, fifty seven degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's it's acceptable. It's not too cold, not too warm. So nothing about to be to be could complaining about. So uh, not a lot of rain. We're doing fine. Uh, we have a community session this evening. I mean, for those of you who are uh, not part of the Agile community, um, I'm definitely engaging you to uh, join us. We have a great session today for the insiders where we'll share some uh, strategic shoes choices we made for for the year 2023. So stay awake. We will share a great insight a couple of days uh, in the Azure community. So besides that, uh, I'm doing extremely good. Um, leaving today for in the evening time for a stand-up comedy together with my, with my wife. So, I mean, more comedy than we have in the Azure community already. And having fun. So, yeah. Wait, are that. you a stand-up comedian yeah. there, Sebastian? No. I would have like the same question. <laughs> I was about to say, are you moonlighting as a uh, as a stand up comedian? That's, uh... No, I cannot really imagine someone wanting to listen to me. That's uh, yeah, I don't know. I think you'd be really uh, good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, but thanks. I appreciate it. That's right. Yeah. Very good. Hopefully, you guys enjoy that. Uh, sounds like a nice yeah. night. What? What? How, how cold does it get by you, Seb? Like in the winter time? What? What is it generally looking like? Uh, uh, you mean from a temperature perspective? Yeah, I know. I see you doing your calculation. Um, so you it's about forty. For, yeah, I, I would say usually we wear about zero degrees. So uh, oh. just yeah. So from uh, it's about five degrees would be forty uh, ser- uh, d- degrees Fahrenheit, and oh, zero okay. would be thirty-two. So that's okay. our usual temperatures. Not extremely cold since we're in the mid of Germany, um, but if you go to the south or to the north, it can be even worse. So for us, it just it. if if you get some snow, you might be lucky. In the last five years, we got snow three or four times, not more than that, and not a really a huge amount. Got it, got it. Well, yeah, uh, snow is something I'm definitely not. Uh, I don't miss one bit. Uh, I've shared that many times here, but selling my snowblower, uh, mm-hmm. getting rid of my snow shovels, uh, the salt, all the things I had to offload out of my garage, I was very happy to get rid of. Um, well, anyway, well, very good. So, so. Uh, for everyone listening, as Seb mentioned, you know, the, the IGEL, you know, a lot of things going on in the IGEL community. Definitely check it out if you're not in the IGEL community. If you listen to this podcast, you're not in the IGEL community. I would find that a little strange, actually. There's probably not too many people that fit in that camp. Um, but definitely uh, use the IGEL community. 
uh, ijokecommunity.com. Uh, Seb's doing a great job over there and just, just giving us a lot of good content. And it's relevant because today is our podcast edition. I'm sorry, our iJoke community edition of the podcast, um, where we cover uh, different community blogs that, you know, mostly Seb. Is there anyone else that, that writes them or you kind of write all of them at yeah. this point? No, no. Uh, we have a lot of people who are also writing uh, content. And the only task that I am doing in that case is taking the content and putting that on our blog site. From the video blog at the moment, mostly me, but we have also great people like Frederick Bradstick, who is delivering great content when it comes to AVD and uh, Fido, uh, two-factor authentication. So there we are sharing from content from others, but from the pure creation of vlog, myself, and from the blog perspective, a lot of people in that of community are wanting to, to share uh, what they did. Well, there Seb you uh, and Patrick, just a little teaser as we enter uh, the re remainder of this year and turn the corner into 2023, uh, I'll be getting with you, Seb, certainly uh, to put some more content together. Um, oh, yeah. More specifically on some areas of uh, interest and some new stuff that we're working on. Um if those are uh, folks listening that are that are in the Improvata camp, uh, having uh, worked with that product, uh, we got some stuff brewing, and uh, we'll be able to share more of that here. So some some good stuff coming. Nice. So, yes. Very good. Very good. Um, well, all right. That's uh, what a great uh, teaser. That definitely. We'll, we'll How leave should you, I compete we'll with that? Right now. Here. Yeah. <laughs> this one is just as important because I'm having a problem with RDP audio. So let's talk. <laughs> yeah, listen, this is one that, um, man, this is probably a topic that uh, I wouldn't say, maybe, you know, we've been talking about unified communications. That's probably the biggest hot topic of the last, you know, maybe two years. And I would I would say probably even still to, till today, right? That's the conversation I want to have with every single customer that we work with. Um, if, especially if they're an agile customer, but even if they're not, I mean, it's, it's just a huge, huge topic that everybody needs more than ever. And of course, one of the major components of that is the audio device. Um, I'm actually coming, we were talking a little bit before this, so I've got my EPOS headset. Um, I know all, I think definitely Chris, that you have one as well. Um, you know, I love my EPOS headset. Great headsets. Mult really, uh, multiple headsets. They, they really so, are the best. You know what? We should really have some sponsors for this podcast. Right. Sure. I mean, this I'm sure segment. there's, yes. It's, it's, <laughs> Brought to you by EPOS Audio. That's the right. Best headsets in the business. We need to get, we need to get a food sponsor, a drink sponsor, and uh, and some technology sponsorships here. <laughs> I'm, uh, that would be nice, especially if they send us food and drinks. Um, that's right. Uh, I'm thinking we'll, we'll Omaha Steaks. I'm thinking Omaha Steaks. Maybe it's getting that. <laughs> I'll talk to our digital marketing guy, see what we can do. Yes, uh, get that guy on it. <laughs> Chase, if you're listening, you know, we got big ideas here. That's right. Um, but yeah, so so guys, you know, obviously audio device is a huge part of everybody's strategy. Um, specifically when you get to the iGL OS, um, it's a little different sometimes than people are used to. People a lot of time are used to having a Windows endpoint. Linux handles things a little differently. iGL has uh, has some tools built in that helps you do things like prioritize devices. Um, and Seb has done a really nice blog here. Uh, that just goes into it. So, Seb, I'm going to go ahead and kick this video off. Um, I don't know if you want to introduce Please. anything else that I'm missing there, uh, but I'll go ahead and kick it off. Yes. And uh, let me hit you here. There we go. Just a few things, maybe. Since we already started a discussion outside of the podcast together with Chris and, and Patrick, uh, we have one starting point where everything can break or work extremely good. So beside the extremely great written unified communication com guide from Lars Glockner that you can find on the agilecommunity.com website, where a lot of recommendations are made regarding how to set up your Zoom on VDI, your Teams, uh, your WebEx, etc. If the headset is not working locally or is not set properly locally, there is a high chance that it will not work in this session. Not saying every time, but it, there is a high chance. So first thing that I would like to say is always test your headset. And if you have the ability to try first with a 
a wired one with a uh, with a corded one i would definitely recommend to do so I'm not saying that wireless headphones are complicated but sometimes you might have other issues hitting in so starting with a corded one like a usb one um is my best bet to start with just to check that everything is working and then you can try to fiddle down all of the other security settings and all the other um, peripherals that you want to integrate. So that's just a first thing I would like to to, uh, to share. The device recognition locally is mandatory for getting into work because even if you're using the Teams optimization or the Zoom optimization, it always rely on the local device recognition. There is one, I would say one exception because we had the discussion with Chris just before just before starting, which is called the native USB redirection, which is mostly used to redirect kind of physically a device from your local USB port to a virtual USB port of your VTI or terminal server. There, it's not it's not needed. Um, but in that case, we usually don't recommend to redirect this way the audio and video devices just because you will break any kind of other optimization that is in place of your team of your zoom because they are relying on the local usage and if the device redirect to the session it will just work there and not in the second session and from a second thing the native usb direction channel is usually not optimized so you will lose all this uh, real-time audio video transfer not saying it would not work just saying it might not be smooth as it would be on a uh, on an optimized channel so just that was just a one one introduction to that extremely huge uh, topic. So on the video itself, I'm starting with explaining with explaining why using that in which manner. But one thing I, I can't already tell you is it's extremely complex. It's extremely complex because no vendor, no device is working from one version to another to one hundred percent. Especially if it comes to to wireless device. So going through the step that I'm describing in the uh, in the first step of the video, so it's about minute two if I remember right from the time time schedule. I'm checking uh, with the system information tool, which is if not disabled by a profile, available in your start menu under the um, system tab, where you can check if the USB device, like yeah, your webcam, your headset was recognized from the system itself, and if it's already there, there's a high chance to get it working uh, on the next level. As soon as you check that, on minute three, um, we have the sound preferences, which is uh, what you're already knowing from, uh, from Windows, from your Mac OS, is basically where you choose your standard input and output device and the volume, the input volume, or also test if the device is working or not. So in a non-appliance mode, it's in your taskbar, it's a little speaker symbol that you can just right click and say um, settings and then look at the um, preference, sorry, my bad, and checking which output device you want to use. Now you may ask, that's a great thing, but what happens if I have a webcam, which is having um, a microphone if I have a headset, which is having a microphone and uh, a headphone, and lastly, maybe also an internal speaker. Obviously, you can just use them at one time. Um, at the same time, you can just choose one default output and one default input. But in that case, you have to do that manually in that tool. And now coming back to how most of our users are working, most of our users are working inside of a Citrix session of our IDP session, and we'll not see the local sound manager. That's right. Let's go back to that question in a couple of minutes. Just saying, if you want to test it, test it locally first to check if everything is working, and then we can go the next step. So yeah, that's that's a great point there, Seb. You know, yeah. that's kind of a, a lot of things, right? Um, always check locally first. It, it really is a huge, uh, just the logical way you want to troubleshoot things with Igel and Citrix or Igel and VMware. Yeah, it just makes life easier, right? It, it just makes it easier to, to debug or to find the, the root cause. We had the same discussion with a couple of customers in the, in the Azure community and also with uh, Azure pre-sales and event services folks. 
We have users, I'm just jumping to another topic for a second, uh, who are using the USB access control, which is an extremely powerful, yeah, I would say some uh, security driven setting that you can make on the Agile OS to block the access to specific device classes or to specific devices. But if you already make a mistake there, then you can break everything which is happening behind that configuration step. So if you are excluding by mistake your audio device in that USB access list already, well, then you can do whatever you like on the optimization side. It will never work because the operating system itself will block already the access to that kind of device. So just saying, start always from scratch, if you can, from a factory to reset device and really start from scratch, test your device, and then add your configuration step by step to check if maybe one misconfiguration or one bug that happens also on our side, it may be blocking the, the execution of your test. That's a great point. I was just thinking about this too. I'm, while you're talking, I'm, I'm um, on my iGel laptop here. I've got uh, the sound preferences up and I, I plugged in you know, headphones just immediately to see what A, does it get picked up? And I'm in the audio jack port here, not, not a USB scenario. Um, uh, it did pick it up. So now I'm going to, and it seems to, how would I know that it's now the default? I would imagine it just, it should automatically recognize that uh, there's headphones plugged into the audio jack and that would be now the default uh, output device. Um, that right. would be expected behavior, correct? For the audio jack? Yeah. Gotcha. That would be, um, and usually the device that you selected in your in your list is the device which is selected to be the primary one. So if it's blue, um, I mean uh, blue backgrounded, blue selected, then it should be the device which will be used by the sound manager itself. Got it. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at now. Uh, as soon as I plugged it in, it it, it turned blue, and um, sounds good. Yeah, fantastic. Um, it kind of, then, it kind of segues into the screen here, right? Because you know, ultimately, you know, to your point, Seb, I, I talk to customers um, frequently, um, and I'm sure you guys do as well. Where you know, headsets have you know microphones built in, and sometimes you know they're working on a device that have USB speakers, but there's a built-in speaker in the in the device, or there's a speaker in the in the monitor, um, and so it can get a little confusing at times, right? When you have multiple input and output devices. Um, so, you know, I see in the video here, we're, we're really getting into how do, how do we set the priority? Yeah, what, what, are your, right. what are your recommendations on that? Um, I would just go just explain where we are at the moment. So we just jumped from the sound preferences back to the Azure setup. So the Azure setup, the local configuration tool that you have usually on your Azure operating system when pressing Control, Alt, and S. Uh, your user will not have a lot to do there because you are doing everything by a profile. But sometimes you want to test something by your own as an administrator in that tool. So that's where we are at the moment. So go, if you go to accessories and then some preference and options, if I remember right, you have the port name and for the output and for the default input. So that's where you can say, do I want to have a specific device name set by default? and used by default on every boot up. In my case, I selected, I'm just jumping to the Zoom right now, um, the um, uh, HDMI output. If you have the exact device that you want to use and you're sure that this device is always connected, you that one, and you can just paste it into your, your profile and saying the BCM28305 HDMI one or whatever uh, you want to use is the default one. If you put that, apply the profile and send it back to you to your endpoint, it will always pick up that sound output as, song, uh, as soon as available. At the same time, you can do the same also for the input. So if you have, like Patrick mentioned, your headphone and you have your Logitech whatever uh, webcam, and you always want the Logitech webcam to pick up, then you can specify the Logitech 4K whatever name, and it will pick up that one. Just two things in that um, in that uh, specific area. First of all, the name has to match one to one what is found locally in the sound manager. So be careful; it should be say case sensitive, and if there is a space, also use the space uh, in in between. My opinion is putting a device in that in that field can be yeah I would not say dangerous because you are not harming your device but can be quite uh, surprising to the user because he is not knowing every time if the webcam will not change or if he will connect another device to 
endpoint or change his headset. So my recommendation is then uh, to jump to the minute. Uh, let's jump to, hold on a second, to minute 8.30, where I would choose the port name instead of the device name. So we have there usually the automatic detection, which is using the automatic order and then using the device name. In our case, you can say, hey, why not using as soon as the device boots up always the HDMI or display port output, because that's where my best speakers are connected to. Or in case I've connected uh, speakers per USB or per jack, use that one. Or even better, if you have a headphone connected via wire or via wireless, say, use my headphones as a default output. And that's something which is extremely handy. Um, um, yeah, I would tell you a, bit, a little bit more about um, a feature in a couple of seconds. Um, but just saying that if you have the default sound input, then set to default headset microphone, then you have the best experience for the user usually that everything is pre-selected for him or for her without having him or her the need to switch to the sound manager, which might not be available because you're using in privata or appliance mode. So you can make the life of your user easier if you preset that in a profile. Now coming back to a, a small hint, because it's only playable on Citrix, but still it's a feature which is not well known and which was a little bit buggy in the past, but which was extremely well right now. Um, I will just tell you in the audience, if you never work with that in the system registry of IG in a profile, you have a specific section and one is called ICA module and then audio redirection V4. I know the name is not really helpful, but if you work with Citrix and with Agile for a couple of years, you know that you have in a, in a standard way in the sound manager of Windows only the Citrix HDX audio input and output, which is not so helpful for the end user because he is not knowing if it's a headset, if it's the uh, HDMI port which is used, it's just Citrix HDX audio. If you want to make that available to the end user, that he can change that in his Terminal so VDI session of Citrix instead of the Windows Sound Manager. Check this register key ICA.module.audio redirection v4, and then you will have the same ability to change between different audio and input devices inside of your Citrix session without having the need to switch locally. And, and Seth, that's not in the video here, right? So can you go through that. What was no, that definitely setting? Right. ICA, um, that, what was it? ICA module audio redirection v4. It's not part of the video because I really focus on the local approach and the local prioritization. But yeah, I'm sure we can definitely have another session on how to set up um, the unified com stuff. I know that uh, Lars already did a session with you, if I remember right. Um, but the audio redirection v4 is a hidden champion, I would say, in the Citrix world. Yeah, that's a that's a great tip. I, I think um, so. We did a workshop uh, with yeah. um, uh, Lars. Yeah. Lars Glockner, and he, I think he went through that exact setting. I think there's also one for the webcam, if I'm not mistaken. So, and I, I've been using that personally. Uh, and it's really cool because in Teams, I can actually just select which device I want as if I was in a Windows endpoint. Yeah. Um, yeah, really, really great feature. Um, so, yeah, great, great, great tip there. So, guys, you know, let me ask you this, you know, um, so this is the way to automate it. How many of your customers, you know, like, I've in the past utilized the uh, quick settings um, with certain customers where they say, look, I just want the end user to have access to certain settings. Um, you know, that might be a good topic to cover if we haven't the difference between settings and quick settings and how to leverage that. But yeah, you know, that's kind of maybe a little bit more of a, a looser way to do it. Hey, give this to your end user. They know where to click a button and then they can go into the, just those settings, right? You don't publish anything else to them except for what you want. So all they would have is the audio settings. They can go in there make some changes, pick default, um, you know, so there's kind of a few ways to do this. Uh, uh, yeah. Any thoughts on that, guys? Yeah, the last time I had a customer that wanted, had a use case for that, we, it was basically their traveling um, laptops and they were accessing a Citrix desktop. Well, they might be based on the East Coast and have to be in Central or Western or Pacific time zone. And they were noticing that if they're out west and they go to check email or something like that that the time was pulling off of whatever it was set and so they wanted the ability to you know have them make 
or modify a change like the time zone and, uh, and that way when it synced up with Citrix, it would recognize and say, oh, it's actually, you know, they're out on the West Coast today. They're, it's, it's, you know, 6.30 a.m. right now out there. So something simple like that, uh, we figured out how to, how to, how to make that work. Uh, but it was definitely the quick settings feature, uh, which obviously you can do a similar thing with the devices there, which I think would be very handy. I can tell you flexibility. One... Yeah, sorry. No, okay, I'm done. Sorry. You maybe one one teaser now on my side regarding OS 12 and the approach uh, on on quick settings. I got the feedback in the Azure community, but also from our pre sales time that the quick settings isn't really handy and really um, user friendly to use. And I mean, it's it's partially right. You have the same uh, structure and the same view as an IGES setup, but just reduce a specific part of the configuration. Um, this might change a lot in OS 12. And I just have seen some, some approach that our devs are, are following. And I can tell you that it's definitely a way more user-friendly than uh, it was in the quick setup. But for the moment, it's unfortunately the only way to do that. Besides, um, if you're skilled in uh, writing uh, some uh, bash or shell script, uh, you can do what is called a Zenity or a YAT selection window where you can say, uh, which, whatever setting you want to do, and the user just have to click one or two, and it would be applied by uh, using the set param or set user param or set group value, depending on where you want to, to set that device uh, setting in the registry. But that's really the high level. For the standard user, display switcher, sound manager, and the quick settings is the only way to go at the moment. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think uh, I always appreciate Seb when you give us a little teaser for OS 12, right? I mean, you, you're uh, you're 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 able to get your hands on kind of everything going on there, so uh, you know, definitely, definitely ho hope hoping you keep uh, keep us in the loop here on the podcast, you know, because yeah, some of those features, right? Um, you know, yeah, I, you know, we're gonna we're almost speaking a different language if if we're talking about quick settings and. Um, that goes away in OS 12 where it's rebranded and has different functions. Um, yeah, I think that's probably a welcome change uh, from my perspective, but, but for sure that, that's good stuff. All right, well, listen, guys, um, you know, I think, you know, this topic, uh, we, we kind of covered about all you can cover on it. Um, extremely useful. I think everybody kind of needs to... Um, you know, have a strategy. If you're an agile admin, you have to have some sort of strategy, how you're going to get a default audio device uh, set up. So Zeb so went through the automatic ones. We talked through more of a user-based manual way to do it. Um, but for sure, if you, you know, if you kind of just throw everything out there and you don't have a strategy, you're definitely going to run into issues. So um, good stuff, guys. Um, you know, a couple things uh, coming up here. And I don't know, guys, I'll, I'll give you a minute too. If there's anything in agile you want to kind of plug. Um, uh, Chris and I were talking before the podcast, we're going to have the Zentegra, um, roadshow coming up. Uh, we're going to be, uh, we're basically doing, uh, Zentegra user groups now based on territory. So the Zentegra, um, user group for Florida is coming up. Actually, I'm just share the screen out. Um, but we're going to be, we're going to be having some fun in a few weeks here, Chris, maybe doing a little bit of uh, extreme go-karting, um, uh, among a few other things that we have going on. Does it um, require me to tech, renew my life insurance before I get in a car? You might want to. Uh, definitely <laughs> check. Make sure your, your insurance company is going to cover you if you knock somebody off the road there. Um, <laughs> but we'll be on, on the 16th. We'll be in South Florida. Um, this place looks pretty cool, actually. So if you're a listener, you're in the South Florida area, reach out to us. You know, We'd love to have you out for this. Um, there's still some spots open. Um, it's going to be a Nutanix and iGel mostly event. We have a bunch of sponsors. Uh, there'll be a Nutanix workshop. Uh, and we'll be doing a little IGEL uh, conversion workshop, or kind of a mini workshop uh, during the lunch hour. Um, so definitely, you know, definitely want to check this out. Chris and I will uh, probably have a good race. Uh, we'll keep you guys up to date on the podcast here on on the results. We'll see who's who's better. Probably Chris. You're from the North Carolina area. Uh, if you're anything like Andy, it's just in your blood. Well, let's see. Uh, give me a couple of laps to get warmed up, and then uh, we'll figure it out from there. <laughs> Got it. Cool. How about you guys? Anything, anything else coming up? So you mentioned the community event, anything else you want to plug here and uh, just keep everybody in the loop? Yep. I would 
be happy to do so. So we have a, a few changes and a few things coming up in the next in the next weeks. One thing I just want to mention because we have some minutes left, the IG committee will turn five. Who would have wow. thought about that uh, on the 20th of December? So if you're not putting yourself on a big dinner on that date or uh, for the North American Collect on a great breakfast, I would be happy to welcome you. We have a community meetup plan to so join us on azurecommunity.com uh, and the event site, uh, because there you can register for that event. And we will have some great speakers, guests. We'll have Jet hopefully joining. We will have Erfan joining. I uh, would have also the early adopters like Frederick Bradsick, like Christian Drilling joining. So all the people who really built the Agile community and were there from the beginning on, but also all the Agile insiders were there from the beginning on and telling us about uh, how they are feeling. And we will share some great facts and figures coming from the Agile community and from their members. So please join there. And the second thing, just uh, because I guess it might be interesting because we spoke about the Agile OS 12 and UMS 12 one, even if you might listen to that uh, the podcast after the event was launched, we have a meetup on Thursday evening, my time, so five o'clock afternoon. Um, it will be recorded and shared on the agilecommunity.com video website afterwards. But we have the UMS 12 and OS 12 story where uh, Mali from our product management or VP of product management will give you crispy insight of what the new operating system and management platform will bring uh, with it uh, at the beginning of next year. So definitely, if you're a fan of Agile and you want to look at the best working and best looking, hopefully, operating system of 2023, please join us on Thursday evening or on the community website for watching the recording. Very cool. Yeah. I'm, uh, so if anyone has any, uh, you know, want to register, you go to agilecommunity.com forward slash events. Uh, I'm going to see if I'm available for that one. That sounds pretty cool. Um, Chris, how about you, man? Anything, any other events, any happenings you'd like to uh, talk about before we close here? Uh, it was pretty busy, I would say, uh, end of summer into early fall. Uh, got a little bit of a respite here before kind of picking things up again and into the holidays. But uh, um, no, it's pretty full. I mean, um, Personally, I, I've I've got some things I'm working on on the channel uh, enablement side, but also uh, the the project that uh, we're doing with Improvata. So we'll have more to share about that in the coming weeks. So as I per, as I prefaced earlier, um, some of that will include you know some community content as well as stuff that we'll put in the uh, IGEL Academy. So where you should be going if you are not registered as a user in IGEL Academy. If you're a partner, you should be registered, just like you should be part of the IGEL community. Uh, but have an academy account because you never know. There might be some secret content there that only exclusive people will have access to. We'll have to see about that. So, Chris, any chance this major Improvata announcement, we can, we'll just make it on the podcast here. What do you say? Uh, we'll let's put it out there. Yeah. Um, got some. Like, if you were paying attention, I'll just, you know. We got a, a thing we announced that we're doing with AVD, um, but there's a lot more going on behind the scenes that we haven't talked about. So uh, some really cool stuff. So uh, stay tuned, my friends. All right. All right. We tried, guys. Can't say we didn't try. But try. anyway, no, so. You're not going to get it out of me, Patrick. Not yet. <laughs> At least. Well, Chris, Seb, you know, always a pleasure. Uh, you know, definitely uh, looking forward to the next one. Uh, for everybody who's listening, definitely subscribe to the podcast, um, whatever podcast app you use. Uh, we're available on all of them. And as always, you know, check out the Zentegra's events page. Look at an event near you. We'd love to meet you in person. Um, you know, we're full steam ahead with events right now. Um, so thanks, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Have a great week. You too, guys. Thank Take you. care.